My friends at Bestark sent me their Model 145 9th generation multiprocess welder for review, so I'll be unboxing it to show you how different things work. Then I'll demonstrate its use by welding some various thicknesses of steel using the MIG and stick functions of the machine. Then I'm going to attempt to make these welds fail. You know, to check the quality of the welds. So who is the best Bestark welder for? This would be a great machine for beginners or those wanting to make occasional light repairs around the house. Being that it works on 120 or 240 volt power, it makes the welder very portable, especially in more remote locations, perhaps even with a generator. Let's see what's in the package. So you have an owner's manual written in just American English, which makes it pretty nice to read. You got a carrying strap, a 110 volt power adapter, a six foot welding whip with electrode holder, six foot grounding cable with grounding clamp, little bag of goodies, which includes a fairly inexpensive roll of Teflon tape, a wrench for removing electrode tips and miscellaneous other doodads. You got three electrode tips, each of a different size. You got a feed roller, uh, which this is the 0.8 and 0.9 millimeter feed roller, which the other feed roller is actually installed in the machine. Two intriguing mystery boxes, one of which containing 0.8 millimeter solid core wire, which we need gas for that. We're not gonna be testing it in this video. And the other box used to contain the flux cord wire, one millimeter, which is already installed in the machine. We got about six foot or so of gas hose, but they did not include from Bestark the uh, regulators and gauges, so we really can't test it in this video. So you get everything in this picture, except the coffee cup, this pen, this chain vise, this vise here, this utility knife, and that sheet metal brake, but all this other stuff you get with it. Sometimes the weight of an item is an indicator of quality, and the Best Arc 145 weighs 17 pounds, 1.5 ounces, and that is with the power adapter, the ground, and everything set up for flux core welding, including the roll of wire. The user manual shows you how to set up the Best Arc welder for whatever weld process you so choose to do, which we're going to set it up for the flux core MIG first, as I will demonstrate. For gasless flux core welding, you want to take your conversion adapter plug and you're going to put it on the negative side. Take your grounding lead and plug it into the positive side. Now we're ready to set up the controls. But first... Okay, so just a moment ago when you were probably thinking about that other thing, I moved the welder over to another bench because we're going to need 110 volt power here. So we're going to pop the hood. Inside you have where your wire goes. You want to take the swing nut off. Okay, so there's a washer, a spring, and a plate under the wing nut. You want to keep those all in the same order. You got your roll of one millimeter or 040 wire. You put it in like you would put in a roll of toilet paper with the wire coming off the part facing you here. Because it's got to go into this little spring looking thing here. And then you put your plate back on. It lines up with like a little cog in the center. And tighten your wing nut down so it puts some tension on here. Because you don't want that, that roll coasting when you're while you're welding. It'll make a bird's nest in here. When you take this, this wire, it's so springy. You can tell it, you can see how it just wants to go into a giant bird's nest. We're, we're gonna stick it in this little spring here. It, it's like a little piece of liner. And you wanna push it until it, you can kind of see it come out the end of the, the hole here. I hope you can see that there. And this knob here turns and that's your, that's your bearing that actually pushes it against the roller. Now, the roller itself, you turn this knob about a quarter turn, and it just comes out. And see how it's marked 1.0? You want that on top because that's the size wire that we're using. You can see on the other side, you have 0.8. That, that's for that other size wire that came with it. Um, the 
solid core wire, but you need gas for that. We don't have gas. Well, I have gas, but uh, that's a whole other thing. But anyhow, you you just get it up over the top of the the roller, and then you got to take your finger and kind of got it in because there's another hole that needs to go into, like right here. I don't know if you can see that on the camera or not, but I just got it in there. And I'm gonna feed it by hand a little ways. We're gonna close this, latch it down, and just snug it up. Now, I have my adapter plug, and I'm gonna plug it into 120 volt. We're gonna turn our machine on. Little rocker switch in the back. And so, this button here is the feed wire button, and See, we're feeding, and I have my nozzle. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold that button in until it comes out the other end. Now, if you meet resistance, I'll show you what to do about it. Okay, we met resistance. So, take this cone off the end of your gun. Loosen this. You might need a wrench to do it, and. What happened is the wire met up with the, the back side of this copper uh, guide. So I'm going to just touch it, feed a little bit of wire out the end, and then stick it in, screw it down, insert your cone, and we're ready to go. Now, now you should be able to just pull your trigger and feed the wire, which we are. So we're good to go. Okay, so there's a rocker switch in the back to turn it on. It takes a second to boot up and you'll hear the fan kick on. And so when you plug it into 110 volt, you'll see the 110 volt indicator up there. When you plug it into 220, it will actually move to 220 and the settings are geared for whatever voltage you have it plugged into. To your left here, you have 2T and 4T type welding. Uh, 2T is when you pull the trigger and you release the trigger, it stops welding. 4T, when you pull the trigger, it's not going to stop welding until you pull your pistol grip away. And you can change that by pushing this button on the top left. See, there, there's like an arrow on it. Uh, synergic welding, it, it automatically sets it up for your volts and your amps to coincide for optimum in what their opinion of optimum would be. If you push the dial, it'll go to your regular, um, it, where you can set them independently. But we're going to go synergic. And on the bottom here, we're set up for 040 wire, which is what we're going to be doing first. And um, But you can change that by pushing this arrow. And you can go from 030, 035, and 040. On this side, it's your process, MIG, TIG, or MMA. It's, that's not mixed martial arts. It's actually stick welding is MMA. I, f I forget. I'll put it on the bottom of the screen what, it actually, what MMA actually stands for in the world of welding. But just push that to switch it. And as you can see, your settings are going to change for whatever wire you're using, depending on how you have that set up. Up here, you have gas and gasless. We're... We're gasless right now, so you have the green arrow on gasless, but you can change that by hitting this top left arrow. And that's pretty much it for the controls. So let's go weld some metal, but first let's talk safety. So we're going to want to keep a fire extinguisher on the bench at all times, except of course for when it isn't. You're going to want to clean the area up for debris, because these things throw a ton of sparks and you don't want anything catching fire. We're going to want to glove up with some good leather welding gloves and of course we're going to want to use a shield which mine's the auto darkening type. It doesn't have to be but if you're going to do any amount of welding it would pay to get one because they do make life a lot better. So I think the majority of the people watching this video are probably going to be interested in what this thing will do on 110 volts. So I have this piece of 8th inch steel here. It's 11 gauge by the sheet metal gauge roughly. But I'm going to say 8th inch, maybe 3 millimeter. And I'm going to run a flat pass on it just to see what it'll do. 
It's something I like about this welder. There's a little cheat sheet underneath the hood. We're welding steel, flux core. I'm gonna go for the four millimeter setting, which is showing 19 and a half to 110. And that's what we're set up for. We'll get it locked up in a vise here. Just make a pass or two on the flat end here. So here we go. Not too bad. I'm a little crooked, but not bad. So let's clean it up a little bit and have a look. Now that's 110 volt. I've done better. I think we've all done better. So I'm going to cut this piece in half. He kept wanting to catch. So it definitely seemed hot enough. I'm just going to weld these two together. See how it does on a inch. I'm going to start out by tacking it. I like to tack all four sides. So it doesn't warp. All right, we got her locked up in the vise. We got um, 19 and a half volts, 110 amps on the 120 volt power. Here we go. Okay. Didn't sound too bad. It actually sounded maybe a little bit cold. Let's chip it off here. It's kind of splattery in a way. Let me get it down on a bench. I mean, I would expect that out of a more economical welder to be a little bit splatty. <laughs> oh, that's hot. That's hot. Let's grab this with a pair of pliers and get it closer to you so you can observe. Okay, so that's my first pass on eighth inch which isn't too bad. Again, I, I, di I didn't bevel this or anything, so these are just, you know, I'm just welding on it. So I'm gonna put this back in the vise and I'm gonna weld the opposite side and then we're gonna try to break it. Okay, I'm gonna run another pass on this side. Okay, there's pass number two. You can see the plate kind of warped a little bit. It's pretty damn hot. But there's pass number two, pass number one. All right, let's stick it in the vise and try to break it. Okay, we're right, right on the weld. Okay, so I got an 18 inch crescent wrench and I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it right in the middle of this weld and I'm gonna try folding it until I break it, if I can do that. Weld's still hot yet. See, if this is your mower deck, you're not gonna break it. I'll get you back a little further. See what's going on here. See, I got the metal to break. However, get you in closer again. It didn't break on the weld. It's broken. The metal just broke where it was folding. So I would call the machine and my weld good. And that, that was a weld with no preparation. I didn't bevel the edges. I just welded on top. 
so I think we're all right there. I've got a piece of Nordic track here with a thickness gauge. So I'm going to call it 16 gauge, roughly 1 16th of an inch thick. So here is our two pieces. I cleaned them up a little bit so I can just do a butt weld on there. Got her tacked together and I'm going to, I got it at 19 volts, 90 amps. I'm gonna probably have to move fast with this if I don't want it to blow through or zap it. I'm going to zap it. Okay. So aesthetically, it doesn't look too bad. Let's see if we can break it. All right. I take our pry bar again, and I'm gonna stick it in here and just try to break this weld. Let's try to snap this thing off. I don't think we're breaking this one. Yeah, we got quite a fish mouth going on on the end and a lot of you guys might say, oh, don't zap it, don't zap it. But on thin metal like that, you pretty much have to. And I've done better welds than that. You can say, oh, porosity, slag inclusion, all this stuff that all of you self-proclaimed 35 years on the pipeline welders say. But this isn't a pipe, this isn't nuclear. This is just a piece of exercise equipment that I welded up. Oh, I got it to break. I don't think you're gonna be doing that to your lawnmower though. Here's some things I really like about the Best Arc 145 Generation 9 welder. I like the lightweightness of this welder at just over 17 pounds. The dual voltage adds to its portability, being able to run effectively on 120 volts. The screen is very bright, user-friendly, and easy to read. The synergic controls make it nice for inexperienced users to achieve great results. I like the price, which at the time of this video is $180, bucks, plus there's a $30 coupon. The Best Arc 145 Generation 9 welder is a great value for a feature-packed multi-process welding machine. As far as dislikes, although the manual is written in clear English, there were things that I still had to figure out to get better results. Aside from that, I wish that they would have included the TIG torch as well as gauges and regulators for the gas features so I could try those too. All things considered though, I would definitely recommend the Best Arc 145 to anyone who needs to make occasional welds or needs a highly portable and capable welder. I want to thank Best Arc for affording me the opportunity to review their welder on this channel. Please be sure to like, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.